One of the first things that I learned how to do when I first got into news was I learned how to, uh, how to operate a camera and how to go out there and gather news myself. And what you're really looking for is, is you're looking for a moment. And that moment can come uh, in a number of different forms. You know, if, you, if you're at a war, you're looking for a kinetic, a very dynamic moment. If you're doing an interview with somebody, you're looking for that, that certain moment where they may talk about something in a way that you haven't heard before. They may illuminate a new idea. Uh, these days as well, you put it together with graphics to explain uh, a, a particular concept to people, whether it be distilling and making easy to understand a very difficult concept or just illuminating for, uh, for the audience a new way of understanding something. It can come in many different forms, but you're looking for that moment. And I think that's one of the most important things when you're considering video journalism. If you have a picture that no one else has, and if you have a picture that tells a story in, in, in a totally different way than anything else that you've seen, that's breaking news. Or you could go behind the scenes and do a documentary type or a long form and, or even a short form investigative type of report. Uh, Drew Griffin has done that uh, with a tremendous amount of impact when talking about the no-fly lists. With Congress now bearing down on watch list mistakes, the Transportation Security Administration... You know, he's gone around to, to airports around the country, shown how people are having a difficult time getting through security at the airport or even getting booked in an airplane because their name shows up on this no-fly list or, or talking with people outside of the airport uh, scene that uh, or airport environment that have ended up on this no-fly list. You know, he's on it himself. So he's, he's told a very unique story using video journalism as the, as the basis for it. And so it can come in a number of different forms. That instantaneous dynamic moment, an in-depth report. I think that it, it's extraordinarily valid in this day and age, particularly when we have so many different forms of information, for video journalists to be out there roaming across the country, roaming around the world to bring people those specific moments that they can't get somewhere else. The more dy dynamism a correspondent can bring to the particular story, and I'm not talking about that, that cliche of reporter involvement in the story, but if you can have the correspondent walk you through the story in a way that helps you understand it, I think that that adds an element to video journalism that you can't get through any other form of journalism.